everybody. We are back. Last time, we started on the Natsuki route. And, uh, yeah, we went through the first normal day. And then some weird bad things happened. And now we're on... Actually, I'm in the second day or the third day? Or, second... Past the reset, I actually kind of forget if there's one or more resets. I think we're only on the first reset. So yeah. I thought we had saved somewhere else. But it looks like we're just going to start right off here. From the very, very beginning. We see not Sayori. We're just going to... Oh... Yeah, I actually forgot about that. <laughs> it's an ordinary school day like any other. And the beginning should be exactly the same as last time. And Monica should ask us to be in the club. Oh, now it's Monica. There we are. Let's just skip a little bit to the actual club. Actually, this should be until the poem, right? I would think. Actually, I can't remember. Was Yuri obsessed with us before we did the first poem? I don't think she remembered anything. I'm just gonna skip through this real quick. Yuri likes tea, but Natsuki likes to write cute things. I'm really just curious about the new content. Okay. Yep. We'll read that special poem. Can you hear me? Oh, that was new. We hadn't seen that one before. Okay, this right here is the new content. Or will be. So it should be pretty easy to pick everything for Natsuki. It should be, anyway. Compared to Sayori. Well, who's not, who's not even here anymore. And of course Natsuki saw... Wow. Of course Yuri... It's all about sad stuff. Oh no! Raindrops are sad, I forgot. It just looks like it's clothing, that's right. Joy was for Yuri, really. That's a little surprising. Okay. Monica says, Hi again, Snake. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. I say, nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. I just want to see... Is it past this part? <laughs> yep, we've seen this. We have to wait until we get that wipe, I believe. Let's do a little save. And our first save was already missing. Good to know. Yuri's being all shy and weird. Oh, we would discuss it with you, Yuri, but I think we're actually going to skip it. Okay. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. 
Can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, the music is slowing down. Natsuki is rummaging around the closet. Ugh, says Natsuki. I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. I say, you looking for something in there? Fucking Monica, says Natsuki. <laughs> she never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point of keeping your collection organized if someone else is just going to mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga, I say. She says, you read manga, right? I say, sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you just can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. I say, how did you know, anyway? Natsuki says, I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I say, I see. It's a lone volume of manga amidst the stack of various books on the, on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. She says, there it is. Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I say, I know that feel. I still hate that line. I get a closer look at the box she's admiring. Parfait Girls. It's a series I've never read, heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic, or it's simply terrible. She says, if you're gonna judge, you can do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. I say, hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. She says it was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Snake. Consider this a li Oh, don't judge a book. <laughs> In fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly moe. She says, don't just stand there. Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsills. She spots the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. I say, wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. She says, chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. I say, eh? Why is that? I say, ah, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. <laughs> Natsuki's alerted and says, don't just say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. And so he crosses her arms and scooches an inch away from me. I say sorry. Didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her, either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I could feel her, feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. She says, Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? I say, you don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? She says, not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? I say, uh, I am. But nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. Looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. A typical slice of, life of slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these, since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough for, to make up for the lack of plot. I say, are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not, she says. I continue, even though you're just watching me read. She says, well, I'm fine with that. I say, if you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? She doesn't. You don't? She says, um, that's not... Well, they wouldn't really know. I, I ask, what do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? She, she says, could you not rub it in? Jeez. I say, sorry. She says, like I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up without them being all like, eh, you still haven't grown out of that yet. Makes me want to punch them in the face. I say, I know those kind of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time. 
but it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm, says Natsuki. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> Wait, which part? She says, I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. My dad would beat the shit out of me if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica's kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I just can't win, can I? I say, well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. She says, well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. I say, maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? So, she says. I laugh. She says, geez, that's enough. Are you going to keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah, I say. I flip the page. So it seems like... She's not... She's not getting flustered like Yuri was. But she's... Her inner monologue, her inner thoughts, are coming out once in a while? Time passes, and Natsuki is strangely quiet now. I glance over at her. It looks like she started to fall asleep. This did not happen last time. I say, hey, Natsuki. She says, yeah. Suddenly, Natsuki collapses straight into me. I say, hey. Oh. <laughs> yep. Oh, Jesus, Monica. Natsuki, are you okay? Here, she says. Monica reaches into her bag and pro pulls out some kind of protein bar. She throws it in Natsuki's direction. Natsuki's eyes suddenly light up again. She snatches the bar from the floor. God damn it. She snatches the bar from the floor and immediately tears off the wrapper. I told you not to give... Mm. She doesn't even finish her sentence before stuffing it into her mouth. Now, I want to check something in the history. Nope. Those, those lines were just garbage. I was kind of curious if we were able to see what they were. Monica says, don't worry, Snake. She's fine. You can just ignore that horrific... just abyss that was her eyes and mouth. It just happens every now and then. It's normal. That's why I always keep a snack in my bag for her. Anyway, why don't we all share poems now? We might as well start... with... Just a second. Might as well start with Natsuki. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. She says, Okay, well let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, Natsuki rereads my poem. Never mind, I don't feel like giving you my opinion. I say, Then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Natsuki says, Well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, Ha! Well, it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. I say, so in other words, you're saying you liked it. Natsuki's retort gets caught in her throat. You're so... You just... You don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that. You don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're so all self-important. I say, pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. I say, in any case, you still need to show me yours, right? She says, fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. It's the same poem. She says, yeah. I told you that you weren't going to like it. I say, I like it. What, she says? Just be honest. I say, I am. Why are you so convinced I wouldn't like it? Well, she says, because. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. I say, but isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. She says, yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. I say, yeah, I understand. 
She continues, but the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set it for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on a purpose. It helps bring out the feeling of the last line. I say, so you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. She says, that's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? I say, yeah, guess not. I decide to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Oh, nothing else happened. Let's just do a quick save. And I'm pretty sure we can just skip on... So yeah, she's acting very strange, still. Yep, she's still acting weird. Let's see, Monica, do you have anything new to tell us? I don't think so. I wonder if her poem changes at all. I doubt it. Ah, well, we skipped it anyway, but... I doubt there'd be a difference. Let's just skip over... Oh! Oh, we get to see the fight between them, and this time we get to say... Natsuki, you're right. Should be exactly the same fight. Get pissy with each other. I liked it. Monica liked it. But there's no Sayori here. And Monica is not good enough. Isn't happy enough to stop each other. To stop them from fighting. Yep, Virtue's and Natsuki here. Still, oh. Well. So, depending on which one you pick, it starts zooming in on that one. <laughs> um, says Monica. Hey, Snake, why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay? Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. She laughs. Some president I am, right? I can't even confront my own pr club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. But I never had it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. Oh, so she loses the fight regardless. She quickly runs away. Monica says, oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. Yuri says, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is rocking back and forth at her desk with her palms on her forehead. I ask Yuri. She says, I didn't mean it. I say, I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Do we get a choice here? Because this is so far the same. Yuri's still trying to stay after to see us. She really wants to discuss her book with me. <laughs> oh, well, there's that. So, back to Natsuki poems. Oh, that's a fun one. Oh. Ah, uh, that's that's new. So Oh, they're still kind of dancing over there. They're just like gigantic and off the screen. <laughs> Kawaii, Hope, Hop, not Joy, surprisingly. I'm gonna say Lazy, Puppy. 
smile. <clears throat> Games. Jump. Oh, skirt was an obvious one. I I'm assuming we're still getting the right thing. But I guess we won't know. Pure sunny. Blanket. <gasps> hey, Frosty. Yeah, missing no love to my poem. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Snake, says Yuri. Three quarters of Yuri rapidly attacking one quarter of Yuri. I say, ah, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Hey, Yuri's back. Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki's reading manga at a desk. And surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. About yesterday, I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. Something that just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. I say, Yuri, I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry about... You don't have to worry too much. Even though you're, I've only been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. She's a snake. Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around, and... She cuts herself off. Sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Natsuki says, hey, have you guys seen Monica? I say, no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. She says, man... Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either. Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. She says, no, I haven't. Natsuki says, geez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help worry a little bit. Natsuki says, what? Why are you looking at me like that? Yuri says, um, Natsuki, about yesterday. I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stand under control from now on. So, Natsuki asks, Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? But Natsuki can't remember still. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing, she says. Don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about little things, aren't you? But, says Ziri. Natsuki continues, I'll accept your apology anyway if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear, since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. Yuri says, no, not at all. I don't hate you. Natsuki laughs. Well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. I say, hey. Suddenly, the door swings open. Monica says, sorry, I'm super sorry. I say, ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late, she continues. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. I say, nah. Well, Natsuki was. She says, I was not. What took you so long, anyway? She says, ah, uh, well, my last period was today was study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. Monica laughs. Natsuki says, that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. She says, I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano, says Yuri. I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. She says, ah, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, says Yuri. That must require a lot of dedication. So I'm, I'm still impressed. She says, ah, well, thanks, Yuri. Natsuki says, you should play something for us sometime. Monica laughs and says, that's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. I say, that sounds cool. I look forward to it. She says, is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Snake. Monica smiles sweetly. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that, I say. She laughs and says, don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I say, I see. Not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. I say, in that case, best of luck. 
She says thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? I say no, or not, not really. I choose not to bring up any of the, th anything the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki has already run off into the closet. Even though we're standing in front of the closet. Here's a snake. Um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you'd like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. I say, ah, I suppose so. I don't think I could say no to you after you gave that book to me. Well, I guess I need to make sure Natsuki isn't waiting for me. After we finished reading yesterday, she... Here says, she's fine. She's reading over there, see? Don't think about her so much. She's used to being ignored. Come on, we're going over there. I say, what's the story about anyway? Well, says Yuri. I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. She says, basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But this f facility gets even worse, and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. Say, that's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. She says, are you not a fan of that kind of sort of thing, Snake? I say, no, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. She says, I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. She says, it's just that this kind of story, it's a kind of kind of challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. And horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil. But because the world is far full of horrible people, and we're all worthless anyway. And suddenly, I'm I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. I say, hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, says Yuri. I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, my whole body gets incredibly... I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So, I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. I say, that's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. I, the least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. She says, ah, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I say, I might as well get started reading it, right? Yes, she says. I mean, you don't have to, but... I laugh. What are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Is this... I want to try something. I... I'm pretty sure I answered enough questions for Natsuki. Or enough for the, the poem. But now I'm not so sure, because we couldn't actually tell what was happening once we clicked on the weird, fucked up text. Oh, I could have kept clicking it that whole time, that's funny. Okay, let's not click on the weird one. Oh, hope is for her. Yeah, we don't click on that. Okay, I think we got... I think we got actually every single one. If this one... Yeah, I think we'll get every one from Natsuki there. So... Maybe Natsuki will pull me away here? Hmm... Nope, we're still on the same thing.
Alright, we're back pretty much at the same spot. So she's reading for her shoulder. I'm kind of concerned that we went through the game the perfect path. And there aren't actually any other routes. Because now we're getting close and, and comfy with Yuri. Yep. But we definitely don't care. You ran out of the room. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll do poems first. Oh, that's weird. She's unhappy with her poem this time. We got nine. We got nineteen to twenty on the mini game, but she's still unhappy with it. Oh, that's lame. Are we actually being railroaded? Like completely railroaded? Looks like a, a code or something. Hmm. It's profound, to say the least. Oh, here's something new. She says, Snake, why didn't you come read with me today? I was waiting for you. I was waiting, a f waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why did you ruin it? Do you like Yuri more? I think you're better off not associating with her. Are you listening to me? Yuri's a sick freak. That should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead. Okay? You don't hate me, Snake. Do you oh, her face is doing that thing again. Do you hate me? Do you want me to go home crying? The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it. Please. Just stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. That's all I have. Play with me. Play with me. Is she following? Oh! We got a DNE. <laughs> wow, that was a that was a neat little little trick there. Hi again, Snake. So Monica's the same. Here he's back. What's my advice for today? I will right, show it to her. We'd like to read this special poem. Okay, so the po the special poems are different. Things I like about Papa. I like when Papa comes home early. I like when Papa cooks me dinner. I like when Papa gives me allowance. I like when Papa spends time with me. I like when Papa asks me about, about my friends with lots of dashes. I like when Papa asks me about anything. I like when Papa gives me lunch money. I like when Papa com comes home before sundown. I like when Papa cooks. I like when Papa gives me privacy. I like when Papa doesn't tell me how to dress. I like when Papa doesn't comment on my friends. I like when Papa doesn't comment on my hobbies. I like when Papa comes home without waking me up. I like when Papa keeps food in the house. I like Papa when he... <laughs> when Papa uses his inside voice. I like, I like when Papa leaves my stuff alone. I like when Papa accidentally drops coins on the couch. I like when Papa is too tired to notice me. I like when Papa is too tired for anything. I like when Papa is too tired for anything. Oh, this is different. Okay, everyone, this is Monica. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone can come sit at the front of the room. Natsuki asks, is this about the festival? She says, well, sort of. There's some weird noise. Hey, sick Dan. We're going through the Natsuki route, and things are getting a little strange. Natsuki says, ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything 
good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. Oh. There's nothing happening. I'm afraid to hit the space bar. I don't know if I should hit the space bar. Get at the space bar. Oh! Here he says, I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Monica says, don't worry so much. We gotta keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Snake joined, and we've started with some club activities. But this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members. And the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? Matsuki says, what's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Monica says, Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to show your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The literature club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, Snake? I say, ah. That's what he says, oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Snake to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica. Do you really think any of us... Okay, so we have seen all of this. This is the same speech. Monica gets really sad. Natsuki likes the way it was. Pretty sure we're gonna have a choice, though. Hmm. No. There was no choice. Hmm. I'm a little disappointed. It seems like the Yuri route was the intended route. But let's see if we can just... Ah, oh, fuck. Christ. We're gonna have enough, though. If this even matters. I'm surprised Papa is good for Natsuki, because clearly there are some issues there. Yeah, I was hoping to get another couple of rats out of this game, but I don't think that's the way this game is meant to be played after all. I think we may have already seen pretty much everything we're gonna see. But, there's at least one more chance. If this is the third poem... Oh, I was thinking... I mixed up the days. We should have one more chance to see something with Natsuki, and then we should have a chance to see, um to be able to choose Natsuki for, like, the weekend thing. So there's a chance. Frosty, that confuses me more than anything. Here he says, hi, Snake. I've been waiting for you. Are you ready to continue reading? I brought my best tea today. Natsuki says, Monica! I told you not to... Ugh. Is she really late again? Considered it as usual, Natsuki Shiziri. Natsuki says, excuse me. She says, must you always keep interrupting... Must you always interrupt my conversations with your incessant yelling? Natsuki says, what are you talking about? You say that like I do it on a regular basis or something. I just wasn't paying attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gotten into you lately? Look, I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt, as long as they're cool. And I guess another girl would be nice this time. So... Here says Natsuki. Nobody cares. Why don't you go look for some coins on the vending machines or something? Natsuki's alerted. Monica says, aw man. And the last one here again. Are you practicing piano again? Asks Yuri. Monica says, yeah. She laughs. 
Yuri continues, you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club, and still trying to make time for piano. Monica says, well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. It motivates me to work hard for the festival, too. Anyway, Snake, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could... Yuri interrupts and says, we already have plans today. Monica says, ah, is that so, Yuri? Yuri says, that's correct. Snake is already engaged in a novel that we're reading together. Aren't you glad I've already gotten him into literature, Monica? Monica says, I... I suppose. I was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You guys could do whatever you want. <laughs> oh my god, Frosty, you got trolled by a guy. That's fantastic. Yuri says, thank you for understanding, Monica. He says, actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? I say no, not at all. God damn it, are we really stuck in this? We... Yep. Same thing. I'm gonna do a quick... Wait. That was weird. Is this the actually correct second time? Wait, no, doesn't she start to freak out? No, this seems normal. Okay, yeah, never mind. This is the this is what happened last time. She breathes at us. But let's talk to Natsuki. Cause we're still trying. But we still can't impress her. She still doesn't like her poems. Even though we try really hard just for her. Ah, uh, yeah, Yuri's still freaking out. <laughs> Natsuki says, I changed my mind. Ignore everything and just, ah, uh, we've seen this too. Yep, Monica's taking over here. <laughs> just Monica. Ah, uh, we'll just go through Yuri already. Yep, she steals it. A joke. A man walked into a club. In the club, there was a girl who liked him very much. They spent some time together, and then she liked him even more. One day, the girl realized she was in love with him. Before disaster could happen, a third party intervened with her programming. Suddenly, the girl hated herself for being in love. This contradiction caused the script to derail. The universe started to collapse, but she killed herself just in time. Monica says, okay, everyone. But... We just want to get to the choice. I believe we have a choice. <clears throat> okay. Oh. Right, we don't actually have a choice here. We'll get the eyes. Yeah. We're gonna tell her no. Yep. And then she's super dead. Ah, that's a shame, Sick Dan. I was hoping there was a... I mean, this is a free... This, this was a free visual novel, so... I mean, I'm not expecting a 50-hour game out of it or anything crazy like that, but... Ah, uh, hmm. I didn't really, I didn't have anything else planned. I figured this was going to take us a, a, a two hours at least. Now we're just looking, looking at a corpse here. I'm, I am honestly disappointed that, uh, that Natsuki was basically given nothing. I'm I'm a little disappointed about that. <laughs> this is always pretty funny though. She's like, "Oh fuck, 
corpse on the ground. And it seems like the script says there's a true ending and a bad ending I haven't seen. Really? All right. How do I how do I get the bad end? Where's this where's this bad end? Because at this point, I'd have to like. Oh, I can't skip anymore. By the way, it's not letting me. True ending you get by just by replaying and seeing all the detailed pictures. Oh. Does it Oh, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about starting a new game and deleting her and seeing what happened. We gotta we can do that one. Really easily. Do we have to do the bad end to get the true ending? And is the true ending like worth it? Is there like a lot of content? This is at this point where I just want to deconstruct the game and see see what useful bits of content are left. The only route we haven't done yet is uh, Sayori. I guess it, it it can't take us that long if we have the skip command. Can't skip. We can prep with... Oh, right, both of them. Okay. Well. Since we're already here, we may as well. Let me just find... No. I need to go to Steam. Steam apps, common, doki doki. Characters, and... Whoopsie doodle. Aw, oh, she's dead now. She didn't even get a chance to talk to us. And I can't skip, unfortunately. So yeah, why don't we why don't we try and see those other endings? So we'll do Sayori next, and then finish with Monica. Then Monica is the fastest one out of all of them because we just have to rush straight to the. Uh... Hey, he who walks, how you doing? All we have to do is rush to the weekend prep, which is on the first cycle. Monica, stop being mad and be more dead. Oh, actually, we have to skip through a lot still. There's technically one more cycle after this. Yeah, we're working on the last endings. That's not what I wanted to do. I was hoping there was... Like a... Partial route for each character left. But it doesn't seem like that's the case. It seems like... Just... A few bits of dialogue here and there. Yeah, the bad ending is really easy. But we might as well get both. This is what I told everyone we were doing tonight, so... Whether we're picking the game apart piece by piece, or we're doing it for realsies, we're still, <laughs> we're still <laughs> looking at the video game. Come on, Monica, put me back. Put me back where I belong. I suppose deleting the other characters doesn't do anything. And then Sayori's gonna be like, I'm the president now! I have the power!
gotta find that file. hear me? Oh, we actually have to listen to this again, which isn't uh, bad. It's me. Um, so, you know how I've been, like, practicing piano and stuff? And not really any good at it yet, like, at all. But I wrote you a song, and I was kind of hoping that I could show it to you, because I worked really, really hard on it. So, yeah. This song is food. You called it sick, Dan. I'm gonna try to pay attention to the lyrics this time. Every day, I imagine a future where I can be with you. In my hand is a pen that will write a poem of me and you. But in this world of infinite choices, what will it take just to find that special day? What will it take just to find that special day? That is a lot sadder when you actually listen to the lyrics. Though if if this world won't write me an ending implies that there was never a route for her as if she were not an anomaly. I hope these people make a much bigger, crazier visual novel. I would pay money for that. Like, I'd, I'd pre-order whatever they made in the future. Okay, so this is going to crash. All I have to do is delete the first run. And run the game again. So let's do a quick bad end. Yeah, we'll do the bad end now. I hope it's a VN. I, it'd be weird if they went with something different. I wouldn't pre-order a non-VM from them, because I don't know what the hell they'd make. So, we'll go into here and go to game. Go. Nope. Characters. And delete Monica immediately. Uh, let me move her in case something breaks. Okay, she has been moved out of the folder. The game does not have her here. 
I think it won't proc until she comes up, is the thing. Okay, so he's like, hey, why don't you join a club? And we're like, yeah, I guess you'll drag us to the fucking thing. I, I like that it has a lot of detail in it, he who walks. I, I love games like that. I'm not one to do all the hunting, by far. I don't have that kind of time. But, it is really cool how much thought is put into games. Sometimes. Oh, I can't wait to see what the fuck happens. It's gonna be fucking brutal. I think they said Monica's name already. I think she. Okay, here we go. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Oh, before starting the game. Uh. Oh, it, it resets my settings too. Oh yeah, she's still already here. All right, let's uh game. Oh, the game crashed on me. Hmm, she hasn't been re-added. Not yet. Double checking. I'm gonna do... see hidden items. Nope, she's not a hidden file. That would be fucking clever. Alright, new game. Oh, this is different. This is already different. Here we go. Sorry, says, well, what? This. What is this? Oh, no. No. This can't be it. This can't be all there is. What is this? What am I? Make it stop. Please make it stop. <laughs> the, the fucking game crashed. Let's open it back up again. Preparing to launch Doki Doki. Oh. Oh, we got an end. Oh. 10 out of 10 true ending. Oh, no. Oh, there's nothing we can do. I saved a screenshot by accident. I don't know if you guys could see that, but that's what happened. Fuck is my it's an F1? No. Actually I don't know what button I hit. Ha! Huh. Hmm. Well, I'll just uh Yeah, that's uh it's pretty fucked up. And we're just gonna delete that first run and start it up again. And everything will be fine. Yes, delete my character and existing data. Because I'm a monster. Apparently. Even though I'm not the one who does fucked up shit. That's true, Sick Dan. I think that's actually the best point. Whoever becomes self the president is self conscious. Or self aware. I mean, they're all self conscious. I mean, that's kind of their shtick. But anyway. Oh, we want to... Uh, settings. So now we're going to do the Sayori route. At mock speed. All we have to do is say everything happy to her that we possibly can.
Okay, first save. Now, what are words that she likes? I don't know. Romance? Nope, not kiss. Joy? Yep. So the... Potentially the happiest possible things. Sparkle? Pink? Nope. Smile? Treasure? Color? Yep. Flying? No, Troll's not Suki. Uh... Lucky. Yep. Aura. No, Aura's... Well, that's fine. Silly. Vanilla. No. Special. I actually don't know on these. I'll try a boop. Eh. Boober's too simple, I suppose. Rainbow. Bunny. No, not bunny. Childhood. And... Crimson. Yeah, fine. Happy or sad things. Suicide and sadness are and cry are hers. Really? Okay. So we're just gonna skip on over to... When she says stuff. Yep. I think this is normal. about it's oversleeping, but I'm pretty sure this happens every time. Oh, what did that say? Nope, this is normal. Oh, no. Maybe. Hard to tell. I honestly can't remember. Okay, this is new. Let me go back. So once she pops open, we'll start from there. Okay. I opened my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Sorry, say, Sayori. Sayori laughs and says sorry. Wait, actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. I ask, does our school have a napping club? She says, you're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know. You'll need, get, you'll need to get used to it. I say, don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. She says, it's true, though. I say, yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. She laughs. It's what I do best. I say, that's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Sayori says, not every day. I say, that's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? She says, that's... It's a secret. I say, I knew it. She says, come on... At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I say, I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Sayori glances around her, at herself. She says, how is it written all over me? I say, you were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really... you. God, I can't talk. Man, you really need to brush for this. Because then I'm a fashion designer. She says, my hair is just really hard to get right. I say, I won't fall for that. This is more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's, tooth there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. I try to wipe the stain off with my finger. She says, but, but nobody would ever notice that. I say, of course they would. 
Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want you to embarrass you. I say, fortunately, I really don't care about that. She says, hey, you meanie. I continue, and you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend? <laughs> Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? She says, that's super mean. I say, sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button up... I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. <laughs> the fucking awkward... She's not even, like, into it. She's just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? She says, this is so funny. What is, I ask? Well, I was just thinking of how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. I say, don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. Baka. She says, it's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? I say, I guess. She says, hey, be careful. The button might come off. I, s I ask, why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near it. Of course, it's near her chest. I say, does this thing even fit you properly? She laughs. It did when I bought it. I sigh. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. I ask, what are you smiling about? She says, it means my boobs got bigger again. I say, don't say that out loud. Anyway, you mo look much better now, so... Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? She says, but it's so stuffy. It's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. And nothing changed. Phew, she says, but so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't have to get a boyfriend, right? I say, what kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because, she says, if I had a boyfriend, then, we, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. I say, stop saying all these embarrassing things. She says, I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez, I say. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. She says, only if you focus on going to bed earlier. I say, fine, fine. It's a deal. She says, I guess we're, we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. I say, yeah, I guess so, huh? She says, so maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. I say, you're doing it again, Sayori. She says, ah, oh, but I was joking that time. I say, man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Monica interrupts and says, okay, everyone. She suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Sayori says, Snake, I can't wait to read yours. I say, yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Monica says, by the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? I say, yeah. Alright, we'll skip to Sayori. Oh, what did that say? I say, who should I show my poem to first? I'm definitely most comfortable with sharing it with Sayori first. She's my good friend, after all. Sayori says, oh my goodness, this is so good, Snake. She says, I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. I say, Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. She says, well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. She laughs. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. I continue, are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? She says, well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a snake poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori so hugs the sheet of against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. She just laughs. I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. I say, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean it'll I'll break my promise. She says, see? It's like I said before, Snake. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying to do things like this for other people. That's something only really good people do. I say, thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Sayori says, yeah, 
And we're gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That would be my way of thanking you. I say, alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. She says, now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. I say, we'll see about that. Okay. This should be normal from here. Yep, it's the same dialogue after, so we'll just do a quick little save and start powering through. There might be a like a tiny bit of dialogue here or there referencing. But on the first cycle, can we say help me, Sayori? Because of their little fight. I say Natsuki. Natsuki glares at me, drawing up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. I say Yuri. But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't even bring myself to say anything to her. I say Sayori. <laughs> yeah, everyone's fighting. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Sorry says Snake. Natsuki says, well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. Oh, Frosty has something for me to do. So I'm going to spend the... I'm going to go the Sayori route, but actually spend the weekend with Yuri. When the love question pops up, say yes this time. Okay. Then go back to Natsuki poems. Then go to the Natsuki poems and weekend see the suicide. But wouldn't we never see the um the Sayori weekend? All right, well, I can try. Uh, Yuri says, it's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. That's what he says, yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. Yuri says, she would never. It's your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. That's what he says, excuse me, are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why. Exactly why nobody likes. Sorry says, stop. Natsuki, Yuri, you guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems. And I think this is what happens anyway? Yeah, this is what happens anyway. Do another little save. Oh, really? It's just a dialogue option. Oh. Okay, so let me read this again. Go spend the weekend with your gotcha. So let's do smile. Fluffy. Mm. No. Crap. Childhood. Joy. Death. Funny, no. Cute, no. Giggle. Oh, I'm doing pretty awful here. Disaster, no. Eternity. Vanilla. Okay, I'm just gonna reload because that was awful. Let's try that again. Cheer. Kid, fuck. It's, I don't know the difference. Suicide. Suicide's Yuri, damn it. One more try. Okay. Sticky. Well, I don't know what the answer was there. Uh, let's see. Dance. Lucky. Cheer. Flower. Treasure. Pure? Nah. Fireworks, adventure, waterfall, damn it. Playground, no. Excitement. 
shopping. No, shopping is Natsuki, that's right. Awesome. Valentine? No. Puppy? No. Spinning? No, god damn it. Lazy. Bouncy. Skipping? Oh, I don't know who I got. This is where she tries to make me do the money thing. Cookies. Oh, did I skip by it? I fuck. I actually went too far. I was expecting a screen wipe. God damn it. One more try. I need to save after this, regardless of what I think happens. Uh, sweet. Party. Silly. Not shiny. Smile. Unrequited? Yep. I keep thinking Suicide's one because of Frosty. Excitement. Joy. Okay, that's definitely her this time. Alright. I need to fix Nightbot. It's saying that a little too often. So, saving here. Alright, and... There's a bunch we can skip. Monica is in the club room. Uh, let's see. I think this is the point right here. Here is back to a book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Oh, I missed the wipe. I'm just an idiot. Sorry says, Snake, Snake. Sorry suddenly comes up to me. I said that really weird. Sorry says, I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? I say, supplies? What for? She says, well, you know how the festival's coming up? Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So we need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. I say, ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. She says, yay. Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Monica says, ah, are you going with Snake to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. So he says, ah, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. Monica laughs. Okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? She says, okay. Ready, Snake? I say, yep, let's go. It's probably that Steam Commons fault. Yeah. There's a bunch of people we can shift the blame onto. Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind Sayori as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly. It feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. I say, hey Sayori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? Not sure how would you make an I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. She laughs. Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so, I ask. She says, yep. We're even going to do a poetry performance. I say, a performance? Of what kind? She says, well, everyone is going to take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. I say, ah, uh, that sounds kind of dull. She says, Snake, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. Like, you say the lines of the poem, like, between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. 
I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. I actually like the startled look on her face for that. She says, like that. I say, Sayori, how do I put this? I say, I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. She says, you meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. I say, I know, I know. I just meant that as a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. She, s she laughs. Don't say that. It's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. I say, yeah, I guess so. She says, I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. Sorry, spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Snake. This classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. I say, the mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to, began to haul myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The, the two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet, and I follow. She says, let's see, what's, let's see what we have in here. Are we stealing from other classrooms? She says, crayons. Sayori so pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Sayori so starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. I say, alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... She says, wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. I say, fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. She says, ah, I dropped one by accident. Smack. Sorry, bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, wow, wow. I say, are you alright? My forehead, she says. Sayori clutches her forehead. I say, gee, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. I say, you have to move your hands, Sayori. She says, but it hurts. I say, just do it for a second. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush the her bangs to the side. She says, ow. Sorry, I say. There's a huge red mark in the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. I say, man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. She says, Snake. I say, where would I even find ice around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. She says, you don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. <laughs> Even wincing with, from the pain, sorry makes a silly joke. I laugh. What are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? She says, okay. I pat Sawyer on the shoulder, not the head, because that would hurt, and run, on, run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter, since it will be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. She says, at least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. I say, Sayori, here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. She says, it's nice and cold. Sayori opens, up the ca opens the cap and starts drinking from it, instead of using it the way it was supposed to be used. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that is a goofy looking picture. I ask, Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, she says, sorry, I forgot. She laughs. How hard did you hit your head, I ask. Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings, she says. I say, just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. She says, hey, Snake. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? I say, what do you mean? She, si she continues, You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. And you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. 
Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? I ask, did I really do that? She says, yeah, you don't remember? I say, come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Everything's my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. She's a snake. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. I say, don't call me that. And, and I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. Guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. She says, really? Maybe you're right. Snake. I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? I say, I ask forever. If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But I, s I say, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? Can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. She says, I'm so happy. Sayuri has a whimsical expression on her face. In her eyes, Jesus. <laughs> we remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. She says, I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? I say, good luck with that. She's going to see her forehead either way. She says, not if I hide it under my bangs. Sayuri hops to her feet. She clutches her forehead again. How hard did she fucking slam her face? I say, don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Monica says, ah, you're back. Good timing, I was just about ready to start with sharing her poems. Sayori, your forehead. I say she's fine, don't worry about. Sayori says, I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into a shelf. <laughs> she says, Monica says, well, anyway, were we able to find everything we needed? Sayori says, uh-huh, I have it right. Sayori frantically glances around herself. She, she says, I forgot all the stuff. I say, Sit, calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. Monica laughs. Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Snake. I say, well, S Sayori. I felt like I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. Sayori says, I made it an adventure. And I say, yeah, that. Monica laughs, okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Sayori says, me too. Monica says, okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? I say, I guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. And here we'll do Sayori. And we can skip everything else. Sayori says, Snake, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding this, these from me. I say, eh? I'm not hiding anything. Sayori says, but your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one, too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I say, I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Sayori says, eh? No way. Not even Natsuki? I say, well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. She says, what do you mean? I say, well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. <laughs> she makes some noises. I say, stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? You somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. She says, like cooking. I say, let's not talk about that. She just laughs. I say, so yeah. Guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. Which is kind of weird. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. She says, I don't know if I understand. I sigh. You never understand when I try explaining things to you. Do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. She laughs. And apparently her injury is gone. I'm not a kid, you know. I ask, are you sure about that? 
She says, maybe. Sari starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. She says, hey, Snake, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. I ask, why? She says, because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. I'm alerted. Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. She laughs. I sigh. Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. She says, really? Snap. I don't know what snap. Oh, she broke her pencil. Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the pieces she dropped. But being inattentive to her surroundings, she bumps right into me. She says, sorry. I say, it's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. Bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sorry, clutches the desk beside her to support herself, me shaking. She says, I'm a little clumsy today. I say, let's sit down, Sayori. She says, yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. I say, anyway, I still haven't read your poem. She says, oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. I say, geez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Yep, same thing. I say, holy crap. Sorry, did you really write this? And this is the same... Same stuff. Sorry says, I'm gonna keep writing until I die. I don't remember that, but maybe because I wasn't paying attention. Ac no, the obsessed... Being obsessed with something before jumping in no more than a week later, I remember that line in particular. Okay. Skip through Natsuki. Yuri. Manga. Yep, and they do all their little speeches. I do my speech. Uh, we'll save at this choice just because. But we'll walk around with Sayori. Alright, so we gotta make her happy again. Damn it. We already messed up. Okay. Lazy, that's her for sure. Spinning. Damn it, whatever. Uh. The happy it seems like the happiest possible, but not always. So like silly was Sayori, but Giggle was Natsuki. Uh Kawaii's probably Natsuki, yeah it was. Dance. Let's just start over. I don't know why these are so hard for me. It's they're just so similar, or at least that's the way I think of it. Uh, music, okay. Oh, it's up here. Dazzle. Oh, damn it. Cloud. No, clouds is not right. All right, I'm just I'm gonna go through the twenty this time. I swear. Cheeks? Sure, hop out. Well, eternity is our. It's obviously her. Never animals. Okay. Giggle. It's not giggling. It's silly is fine. Giggle is not. Sticky. No. Imagination. That's. Ocean is fine. Memories, yep. Friends, cheer, laugh, treasure, excitement, playground. No, suicide. Damn, the suicide one every time. Uh, whistle? No. 
childhood. Daydream. Tour. Now tour. Wonderful. We pretty much got this one. Holiday. Uh, I'm just curious about that one. Marshmallow. Eh, I think that's enough. This is the Dark Souls of Visual Novels. You nailed it. Alright, Monica's the last one here again. Sorry, is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. So she's spacing out. actually get an interaction with her today. Let's save again. Just to save to save. Everyone goes to retrieve the pumps and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Oh, we just don't get an event. Okay. Well, let's try with Sayori. So he says, this is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Snake. I say, er, thanks. She says, mm-hmm. I say, Sayori, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything all right? She says, of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. She laughs. I ask, do you want a nap or something? She says, no, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. I say, well, all right. She says, hey, Snake, I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does, or even Natsuki. But in the end, I say, yeah. I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. She says, why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else. I say, wait, of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me, and I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a, a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only, only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. Sayori? She says, no, Snake. I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. She says, if you had fun with everyone else instead, this wouldn't be... This would be so much easier. I say, Sayori. I glance around the room to make sure no, nobody has noticed this. I say, Sayori. I probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Snake, she says. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. She just laughs. I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. I say Sayori. But she interrupts and says, Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Oh, that's an interesting theory, he who walks. Hmm. Well, let's do another little save here. Why not? We're going to skip through the rest. So we should get the question of who to do the weekend with. I just want to see what the dialogue is. So, we'll say Sayori. I say, I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and... Yuri says, but Monica said... Natsuki says, Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez. Do you really hate us that much? I say, no, no. Monica says, sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Oh, then I'll say Monica. I say, well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. She says, yeah, you picked me. Natsuki says, hold on one second. Yuri says, yeah. 
<laughs> Natsuki says, Monica, you're the one who needs help. Needs the least help out of all of us. Monica says, but. Yuri says, I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable. Did we did we see this? But you already have Sayori as well. Monica says, but Snake was the one who uh that's good. Natsuki continues, that doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Yuri says, Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Monica asks, ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with ulterior motive motives. Natsuki says, excuse me. Monica continues, otherwise, this wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. Yuri says, that's completely false, Monica. Natsuki agrees. We have a lot of work to do, you know? We won't do as good of a do as good of a job if you make us work alone. Monica says, ah, maybe that's true. Yuri continues, think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Monica says, um, ah. Uh. Natsuki says, so are you going to do the right thing, president? She says, okay, okay, I get it. Sigh. It's technically most logical for Snake to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. Alright, that was pretty great. So Frosty said, go and go the full Sayori route, but actually speak the way begin with Yuri. When the love question pops up, say yes. Don't wait for the suicide, load back. So once that scene's done, load back. Okay. For a second, I thought I had to accidentally skip the entire weekend. Somehow. I have to be careful not to skip too much. Oh, wait, no, it's gonna hit a question. There we go. I say, I love you. Sorry. I say, those are my true feelings. So, there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you are the tr you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Sorry says Snake. Oh, here's the new thing. Suddenly, Sorry wraps her arms tightly around me. Snake, she says. Is this really okay? I say, yeah. I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her closer. I say, you'll never have to let go of me again. She says, I love you, Snake. I want to be with you forever. I say, me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. She says, what is this? I ask, Sayori. She says, I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. Is this the first scene where we see a bunch of ourselves? She says, but why? Even now, why won't the rain cloud go away? They're not going away at all, Snake. I say, it's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no, how ma no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. She says, okay. I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. I say, so, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? She laughs. What are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it always has been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I say, I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. She says, hey, Snake. Sayuri gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. I ask, are you saying this is making you feel sad, Sayori? She says, I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me I, you love me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. I say, yeah, I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. 
I know that I love her, and she loves me. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sawyer's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more, or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me. And I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. Okay. Day of the festival. So we're going to save here for fun. And we're going to load... All the way to the first poem. Good thing we have that. And once we're at the first poem... Then go to Natsuki's poems and weekend. This is really fucking specific. Then go Natsuki's poems. And then... So Natsuki first phase, Yuri second phase. Alright. So now, I have to do this... Oh, sticky. Puppy. Twirl. Silly. Skipping. There we go. Uh, sense. No. Dead. God. <laughs> oh my god, this is the worst. Heartbeat. No, fun's not in. Cage? No. Kawaii. Heart. Oh, so Doki Doki and Heartbeat are for her, but the actual word heart is for her. God damn it. Ribbon. I have to do Natsuki Weekend. He'll, he'll have everything out of the first phase. Wait, no. Frosty, you told me not to do Natsuki for the weekend. You told me... Do Natsuki poems... Oh, and weekend. But I did the Natsuki weekend. Were you not here for that? I've done that before. Or do I have to see everything in one run? That's the... If I have to do everything in one run, then okay. I need every scene in one run. That's crazy. Oh, that's true, because when I reset, it undoes it. Wait, does that mean I need to do Yuri, then? Oh, wait, no. The second phase does all Yuri scenes. Even if they look a little weird sometimes. Okay, I get it. it. Took me a second, but I get it. Okay, boop. Lipstick. Covet. Sugar. Puppy. Color. Jump. Pleasure. No, nope, not pleasure. Ribbon. Light. Parfait. That's Natsuki 1 down. I'll see Natsuki 2 in a second. Yep, he's Natsuki number 2. <laughs> oh my god, that looks weird when it's sped up. Now she's sad. This is definitely a little challenging. I don't think I would have th 
thought to do this. I would have probably thought just restarting the game four times would have been enough. But to do everything within one run, because of the weird way this game does things like that. Uh, let me just do a save here. In case I fuck this up somehow. Oh, right. Cute. Pleasure. Oh, right. Warm is for her. Interesting. Hmm. I'm glad I saved, because I'm doing pretty poorly here. sure on this one. Broken? Nope. No, not play. I'm actually not sure if I did this one right. We'll see. Oh, I did it right. Okay. Not that it matters. This I don't think this one matters. Yeah, sick Dan, it gets... Some people are crazy about it, and some people... And sometimes there are just hints. And we do that Suki weekend. So, please confirm, Frosty, that I did everything correctly. In the roughly 60 seconds you have to do so. did. We saw the weekend with Yuri. We just saw hers. Sayuri doesn't have a weekend, but we did the I love you thing. We'll just say that. Think we're good? Well, let's find out. Oh no. Okay. Now we go full Yuri. Did, would it actually have mattered to say no to the love question? Because it wouldn't. It didn't get us any other different stuff. But maybe it does matter. We do want to read the special poem. Oh. Hmm. That's one we haven't seen before. Hmm. Okay. Ah, oh, fuck, we got one for her. Now full blast Yuri. Uh, at what point should I stop speeding up? I'm assuming it's after the second poem. Because the second poem has a different, uh, image. Oh, delete after deleting Monica. Okay. Save here again. 
can. was for her. Huh. Wait until Monica's talking in the room, yeah. Okay, so I guess we'll just kind of hang out for the next few minutes as this just kind of skips through. Because uh, this is going to take a, a, a little bit. Her palms are getting sweaty. Mom's spaghetti. Oh man, I'm a poet. I would like to read the special poem. This is the same one. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder if it's a little random what effect happens, because I don't think we got that red effect the first time we played. Destiny. Oh, that was her. That's Monica. I love this. I love that part, by the way, where Monica slowly zooms in. Oops. Oh, okay, everything's fine. I didn't mean to click her first. I didn't think it would matter. I can't convince myself to go to therapy when I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'd rather keep this up until I blow my cover and someone takes me to the emergency room. Oh, no, Monica, no. Uh... <laughs> I still love how goofy some of these things are. Uh, yes. Oh. We say the word yes and suddenly she's on the floor with multiple stab wounds. Did we black out? What's that about? Man, I think we're a murderer. Secretly. Might be anyway. We're kind of rude for not even closing our eyes, I think. We didn't see your eyes pop, but it may have been so fast that we just didn't catch it. So it's unclear. Oh, I can't skip this. I can't. Oh, right, skipping is prevented at this point. So I just have to spacebar and click really fast. Oh, he who walks, I didn't know. I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that her expression changes. <laughs> Welcome to the literature club. Okay. Time to create her- time to delete her shit. Goodbye, Monica. Alright. Is it after the credits? After deleting Monica. Ah, uh, that's all you know. Okay. Snake, what's happening to me? It hurts so much. Just hurry and help me. To 
we delete her? Maybe. She can't prove it. You were all I had left. I sacrificed everything for us to be together. Literally everything. I sacrificed people. Even if they weren't real people, they still seemed like they were sentient. Oh no, we're the bad guys. We need to find other people to torture. Well, I have been asking all over Twitter about the next visual novel we should play. Okay, let's see what happens. Ah, oh, she still loves us. Still the same. Yeah, Sec Dan, I was actually looking through those. Uh, a lot of them are 18 plus, which is not something I can stream. I think Swan Song was one of the ones I'm like, hey, that sounds pretty cool. People are trapped in like a, a, a wintry earthquake, like societal collapse kind of shit. And they're trapped in a church. Like six people or something are trapped in a church. And they have to f try and find a way to survive. And it sounded interesting. That one's 18 plus. Sadly. But sadly, they were still my friends. I loved them, but I killed them. So I can't tell. I've heard I've heard of Steins Gate before. It's been, it's like I've heard that's one of the animes I've heard about the most, but I've never even looked at a single episode. All right, new game. We're doing a school game, school day. I'm gonna save here. So this seems to be all the same. Was that different? Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? <clears throat> Hi. I think she said we all love you. Um, so you know how I've been. It like, wasn't as evil last time. This time. And stuff, and ah, fuck. Not really any good at it yet, like at all. All that time. But I wrote you a song. And I skipped some of the new dialogue. I worked really, really hard on it. I blame Frosty. So, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know it was that dialogue. Every day, I imagine a future where I can Oh, wait. Yeah, that's true. If I... I'm going to try this real quick. Let's see what happens. If I fucked it up, I fucked it up, but I might as well try and save it. Ah, fuck. I don't think we can go back. <laughs> I can slow it down when I put it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I thought there was a... Yeah, I, I was misled a little bit. I thought there was a poem. I thought it was just a developer comment. I didn't know that. And dialogue and changed. Not really any good at it yet. Like, I'll have to at look all. it up. It, there's but other things. Frosty figured it out somehow. I'm sure we can all do the same. We'll go through the ending one last time. See if there is any other bit. There is still a creator letting letter. Creator letter. Okay. This wasn't a complete waste. Every day I imagine a 
future where I can be with you. I suppose I could skip through everything super fast and I'm looking for only that one part. In my hand is a pen I might do it. Because I'd like to, I'd like to kind of just put this down forever once I'm done tonight. It would only take like five minutes. <laughs> Sorry, Frosty. I figure that's a fine quote too. But I could, I can understand why you wouldn't want to keep that one. You only keep the ones that hurt me. Have I found everybody a fun assignment to do today? They're not being deleted. Everything that we do is fun for them anyway. When I can't even read my own feelings, what good are words when a smile? says it all and if this world won't write me an ending what will it take just for me to have it all oh, okay if that's all they do stick to if that's all it was then it's fine I suppose I do like that there's a true end. Even if it's a little bizarre. Even vis visual is novel standards. If I take your is it love, if I set you free. Being closed down into a dark puddle. How can I write love into reality? If I can Sound of your heartbeat. What do you call love special thanks to Monica and Snake? And in your reality, if I don't know how to love you, I'll leave you be. <laughs> oh, fucking Christ, really. It's on a goddamn double-sided note card. To the special play who achieved this special ending. For years, I've been enamored by the ability of visual novels, and games in general, to tell stories in ways not possible using traditional media. Doki Doki Literature Club is my love letter to that. Games are an interactive art. Some let you explore new worlds. Some... <laughs> he didn't even... He... Some challenge your mind in brand new ways. Some make you feel like a hero or a friend, even when life is hard on you. Some games are just plain fun, and that's okay too. Everyone likes different different kinds of games. People who enjoy dating sims may have a heightened empathy for fictional characters, or they might be experiencing feelings that life has not been kind enough to offer them. If they are enjoying themselves, then that's all that matters. That goes for shooting games, casual games, sandbox games, anything. Preferences are preferences, and our differences are the reason we have a thriving video game industry. My own favorite games have always been ones that challenge the status quo. Even if not a masterpiece, any game that attempts something wildly different may earn a special place in my heart. Anything that further pushes the limitless bond bounds of interactive media. I extend my true gratitude to all of those who have taken the time to achieve full completion. I hope you enjoyed playing it as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you for being a part of my literature club. Love, Dan Salvato. It wasn't just one person who made this, right? Oh no. Please reinstall the game. So yeah, um he who walks. I would say Yuri was my favorite because she had more content. Oh if it was really just him, he did a fantastic fucking job. This was spot fucking on. I I it's still incredible the people who do one man games with all the art and dialogue and music. I guess like, if he did everything by himself, then that's nuts. That explains the ears. But, um... 
No, I'd I'd say Yuri. Because I don't know, it was just more interesting. It felt like a all the dialogue was better. Even when we finally got to the the real meat of Natsuki's uh Natsuki's route. Like, all the dialogue was just really bad. Like, clearly Yuri was written and thought of way more. And then Natsuki was just kind of like, a, oh, yeah, she's there too. They even did the same finger lick thing. And I'm like, oh, well, you kind of just... It felt to me like they copied that from Yuri's route, where it made more sense. Because it just it seemed to make more sense there than it did for the, the food thing. It felt more forced. I don't know. Um, Sayori's fine, but she doesn't get enough... You can't be with her for most of the game, so you can't really say that. But yeah, I, I, Yuri. Yuri's fine. But the game was great, overall. I thought it, thought it was fantastic. I'm glad I got to play it for you guys. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I got a pretty good reception out of this. More than I was expecting, to be honest. I wasn't sure if people would enjoy just a uh, somewhat monotone rendition of all of the characters at once. <laughs> but uh, if you guys enjoy this, uh, I'm thinking about doing another. Uh, right now, Corpse Party is on the docket. Yeah, the twist was better. You, Natsuki didn't have a twist. I think that's why I don't like Natsuki as much. Yuri actually had the, the, the sudden oh hey I'm going nuts oh hey I'm stabbing myself like all that. If Natsuki had that entire length as well, and we could see like her father beating her to death or something horrific, like, just as fucked up but in a Natsuki flavor, or like her coming in with like all these fucking wounds and then she kills herself in front of us like you Yuri did. Like that's what I would have wanted then I may have been more interested in her, because I did like her personality, too. She was, uh... I, I guess I like her inner monologue thoughts better while she tells people to fuck off and stuff. I thought that was really funny. But yeah, uh, I'm thinking of Corpse Party. If you guys have any ideas, please feel free to suggest anything that I can actually stream. I'm probably gonna play that swan song game in my spare time if I ever have the fucking time. And I'll look into Steins Gate. I have no idea what it's about. Maybe if I read a little extra dialogue thing on it or something, I can get a feel for it. I'd also like to avoid, like, a 50-hour thing. This was... So, when you look at the visual novel recommendations in Reddit, that little page there in the visual novel subreddit. Yeah, careful with spoilers. Yeah. I mean, like, the, the tagline on the box kind of thing. Um, Almost, I think, I'd say about half or more of those in that, that listing are 18+. Plus. And that's kind of a shame, but most people aren't... Uh... Okay, Frosty. I'll I'll talk to you later about that then. But yeah, I'm just kind of disappointed there aren't more not 18 plus horror games. There's like two, and this is kind of one of them. Even though Doki Doki is not on that list for some, some fucking reason, what's that about? This game deserves to be on that list 100. percent Uh, and then, uh, just finishing things up. We're gonna. I need to talk to Zavrin. We're going to be doing some Resident Evil 6 at some point. I'm going to continue to shitpost on Twitter with clips of random things. I clip. I managed to clip the uh, Sheva and Chris jumping cross, cross jump through the door, which is probably one of my favorite cutscenes in the entire game. Ah, uh, yes, sick Dan. There are Easter eggs all over the place. I'll probably dive deep when I'm bored at work sometime. I'll I'll do the Doki dive and just see what I can find. The, see what other people have found. Sorry. I'm not going to do that myself. I'm going to save all that time and effort and let someone else point out the cool things to me. 
And, uh, yeah. I think that's it for tonight. There's not really enough time to start anything new. We... M I want to... I want to wait a few, I have a poll running on Twitter, but I want to kind of wait a few days before I decide what visual novel is next, or what game. We may also switch to Doom briefly. Doom should be pretty quick. It's a game I've been meaning to play, and streaming is a good way to get me to play a game I haven't played before. And then actually finish it, too. But, I think that's pretty much it. I don't know if you guys have any questions for me, or anything like that, but... I think we'll just kind of finish up and I'll probably cut this out of YouTube probably. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see. This is all up on YouTube. Some of the first episodes are already up. Uh, if you if you wanted to if you wanted to slow down that part it will eventually be up there. If you go frame by frame maybe you can catch it. Alright. Thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate it. Have a great night.